Hello everyone. Today in dermatology lectures, we are going to discuss structure and functions of the skin. Together with hair, nails, sweat and oil glands and nerves, skin forms the integumentary system. And in this video, we are going to discuss anatomy, physiology and normal skin histology. Skin is the body's largest organ contributing to one sixth of the total body weight. It covers 20 square feet in area and it has three primary layers, epidermis, dermis and hypodermis. Epidermis is the outermost top layer of the skin. It has an average thickness of 0.1 millimeter on the eyelids to nearly one millimeter on the soles. It is avascular divided into five sublayers, stratum corneum, stratum granulosum, stratum spinosum, stratum basale, and sometimes stratum lucidum. Now we will discuss layers of the epidermis in detail. Stratum basale is the deepest layer separated from the dermis by the basement membrane and attached to it by hemidesmosomes. The cells are cuboidal to columnar, mitotically active stem cells that are constantly producing keratinocytes. This layer also contains melanocytes. Stratum spinosum, it consists of eight to 10 cell layers, contain irregular polyhydral cells with cytoplasmic processes called spines that extend outward and contact neighboring cells by desmosomes. Stratum granulosum, it consists of three to five cell layers, contains diamond shaped cells with keratohyaline granules and lamellar granules. Keratohyaline granules contain keratin precursors that eventually aggregate, cross-link, and form bundles. The lamellar granules contain the glycolipids that get secreted to the surface of the cells and function as a glue, keeping the cells stuck together. Stratum lucidum. It consists of two to three cell layers present in thicker skin found in the palms and the soles. It is a thin, clear layer consisting of elidine which is transformation product of keratohyaline. Stratum corneum, it consists of 20 to 30 cell layers. It is the uppermost layer made up of keratin and horny scales made up of dead keratinocytes known as anucleate squamous cells. Now we will discuss the normal histology of epidermis. Starting from the bottom, Basal cells are cuboidal or columnar with a large nucleus, typically containing a conspicuous nucleolus. Small numbers of mitosis may be evident. Clear cells are also present in the basal layer of the epidermis. These represent melanocytes. Cells with clear cytoplasm seen in the stratum spinosum represent Langerhans cells. Very occasional Merkel cells may also be present but these are not easily identified in hematoxylin and eosin stained sections. Keratohyaline granules typify the granular cell layer. Further maturation leads to loss of nuclei and flattening of the keratinocytes to form the plates of the keratin layer that is stratum corneum. The cells of the epidermis are keratinocytes, melanocytes, Langerhans cells, Merkel cells. Keratinocytes produce keratin and are responsible for the formation of the epidermal water barrier by making and secreting lipids. Keratinocytes also regulate calcium absorption by the activation of cholesterol precursors by UVB light to form vitamin D. Melanocytes primarily produce melanin, which is responsible for the pigment of the skin. They are found between cells of the stratum basale. UVB light stimulates melanin secretion, which is protective against UV radiation, acting as a built-in sunscreen. Melanin is produced during the conversion of tyrosine to dopa by the enzyme tyrosinase. Melanin granules from melanocytes then travel from cell to cell to the long processes, extending from the melanocytes to the neighboring epidermal cells and to the cytoplasm of the basal keratinocyte. Langerhan cells. Langerhan cells, also known as dendritic cells, are the skin's first line defenders. 
and play a significant role in antigen presentation. These cells are found in the stratum spinosum. These cells express both MHC1 and MHC2 molecules, uptake antigens in skin and transport to the lymph node. Merkel cells. These are found in stratum basale, directly above the basement membrane. These cells serve a sensory function as mechanoreceptors for light touch and are most populous in fingertips, though also found in the palms, soles, oral and genital mucosa. These are bound to adjoining keratinocytes by desmosomes and contain intermediate keratin filaments, and their membranes interact with free nerve endings in the skin. Basement membrane or dermoepidermal junction. The basement membrane lies at the interface between the epidermis and dermis. Basal keratinocytes bind with the basement membrane by hemidesmosomes. They are complex structures made up of bullous pemphigoid antigens 1, bullous pemphigoid antigen 2, plectin, alpha 6, beta 4 integrin. Now we will discuss dermis. The dermis is a connective tissue layer of mesenchymal origin located deep to the epidermis and superficial to the subcutaneous fat layer. The composition of the dermis is mainly fibrous, consisting of both collagen and elastic fibers. Between the fibrous components lies an amorphous extracellular ground substance containing glycose aminoglycans such as hyaluronic acid, proteoglycans, and glycoproteins. The dermis is divided into two layers. Papillary dermis. The papillary dermis is a superficial layer and consists of one third of the total thickness of the dermis lying deep to the epidermis. The papillary dermis is composed of loose connective tissue that is highly vascular. Reticular dermis. The reticular dermis is the deep layer consisting of two-thirds of the total thickness of the dermis, forming a thick layer of dense connective tissue that constitutes the bulk of the dermis. The reticular dermis comprises thick elastic fibers. Collagen is the main component of the dermis. Specifically, type 1 and type 3 collagen are found in abundance. Elastic fibers also play an important structural role within the dermis. In contrast to collagen, the biochemical configuration of the elastin allows for gliding, gliding, stretching, and recoiling of uh, fibers. The dermis houses blood vessels, nerve endings, hair follicles, and glands. There are many cell types found within the connective tissue of the dermis, including fibroblasts, macrophages, adipocytes, mast cells, Shawn cells, and stem cells. Fibroblasts are the principal cell of the dermis. Mast cells are typically found surrounding dermal capillaries. Now we will discuss the functions of the dermis. The structure of the dermis provides a connective tissue framework for strength, flexibility, and protection of the deeper anatomical structures. Collagen and extracellular components like hyaluronic acid fortify the skin and facilitate an anchor for the epidermis via hemidesmosomes and other adhesive basement membrane zone components. Elastic tissue also helps support the skin and provide flexibility. The blood vessels in the dermis are crucial for maintenance of the epidermis and epidermal appendages. Nutrients via blood support the epidermis, hair follicles, and sweat glands. The vascular network further permits the dermis to host an inflammatory response via recruitment of neutrophils, lymphocytes, and other inflammatory cells. Other main function of the dermis is thermoregulation. Vasoactive dermal vessels regulate body temperature. Specialized structures called glomus bodies also take part in thermoregulation. Glomus bodies are complexes of glomus cells, vessels, and smooth muscle 
cells that predominate in the digits, palms and soles. Although often within the dermis, ecrine, sweat glands or ectoderma derived epidermal appendages that invaginate into the deeper tissue of the dermis and subcutaneous layer. Another main function of the dermis is sensation. Several mechanoreceptors are present in the dermis. Nerve endings in the dermis surround hair follicles. These nerve endings sense hair movement and act as mechanoreceptors, allowing sensation to extend beyond the skin, uh, skin surface. Deep pressure receptors also exist. Pacinian corpuscles are large, lamellar, ovoid structures found in the deep dermis and they provide deep pressure and vibration sensation. Meissner's corpuscles located in the dermal papillary of the papillary dermis respond to low frequency stimuli and these are concentrated in glabrous skin. Cells of the dermis and their function. The dermis contains many cell types. Fibroblasts, the principal cell of the dermis, handle the synthesis of the collagen, elastic, and reticular fibers, and extracellular matrix material. Histiocytes are tissue macrophages present within the connective tissue and assist immune system. Mast cells are inflammatory cells located in the perivascular area of the dermis. Mast cells secrete vasoactive and pro-inflammatory mediators important in inflammatory reactions collagen remodeling, and wound healing. Dermal adipocytes are a distinct cell population from the subcutaneous adipose tissue. Dermal adipocytes not only provide insulation and energy storage, but also assist in hair follicle regeneration and wound healing. Dermal appendages are another main structure of the dermis and consists of hair follicles, sebaceous and sweat glands, fingernails and toenails, originates in dermis and protrude into the epidermis. Contribute epithelial cells for re-epithelialization. Hypodermis, also called subcutaneous fascia, lies deep to the dermis. It is the deepest layer of the skin and contains adipose lobules all along with some skin appendages like the hair follicles, sensory neurons, and blood vessels. Its functions are anchors to deep tissue, regulates body and skin temperature, stores energy in the form of fat. The thicker the adipose layer, the poorer the blood supply through it. As we have already discussed, many functions of the skin. The six primary functions of the skin are social interaction, temperature regulation, a sensory organ for pain, temperature and touch, eliminates waste, a protective barrier between internal organs and the external environment, senses of vitamin D. Now we will briefly discuss the embryology of the skin. The epidermis is derived from the ectodermal tissue. The dermis and hypodermis are derived from the mesodermal tissue from somites. The mesoderm is also responsible for the formation of Langerhans cells. Neural crest cells responsible for specialized sensory nerve endings and melanocyte for formation migrate into the epidermis during epidermal development. And this is all for today. Thank you everyone.